tonight and go to the Gospel of Luke, if you would please, the Gospel of Luke chapter number 1. Luke chapter 1 tonight. I'm going to read just a few verses. I ask you to follow along if you would. Luke chapter 1 tonight. in a little while, singing some songs and so forth. Let's go ahead and stand out of reverence to the Word of God as well as kind of stretch our legs a moment. And I'll pray and you can be seated. Luke chapter 1 tonight, beginning with verse number 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. I want you to notice back in verse 46. The scripture reads, And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, I sure do love you tonight. I want to be a blessing. Lord, I believe with all my heart I've sought your face, and this is the direction you've taken me for us tonight as a church body. I thank you for these that are here, and I pray for those that are watching online or will, or will see this later on. I pray that you'll be glorified in it, and uh, we'll just give you the praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can be seated tonight. I've entitled the message tonight, My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord. My Soul Doth Magnify the Lord. When considering our God, and it's a good thing to consider Him, amen? When considering our God, one would do well to remember some things about Him. One thing for sure, in Isaiah 40, verse 12, it says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of His hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. That's a big hand, amen? That's a big God tonight. Imagine all the bodies of water. And the scripture reads, the scripture reads that he measures those waters out in the hollow of his hand. The hollow of his hand. That's a mighty big hand, amen? That's a mighty big hand. And uh, someone said that the earth is three-fourths full of water. That's amazing. There's a massive of bodies of water. And, uh, and also the scripture reads that, uh, that uh, he's meted out heaven with the span of his hand. Now, with his span, that, that's, to my understanding, that's the, that's the tip of the pinky and the, and the space between that and the, the tip of the thumb. So that's the span. So, that's a mighty big hand. Amen? That's a mighty big hand, our God. Now, that's just his hand. That's not God. Amen? That's just his hand. We serve a big God tonight, church. Amen? Mm -hmm. We serve a mighty big God. I tell you what, we need to stop looking at circumstances and making circumstances big and our God little. We need to start looking at our God. He's big and make the, who makes the circumstances small. Amen? There ain't nothing mm -hmm. too hard for my God. Amen? Nothing too hard for our God. Mm -hmm. And uh, with God, all things are possible tonight. Amen? Amen? All things are possible. And uh, we serve a mighty, big, powerful God. Now, I think about that song. We've sung it before many times. I thought about singing it tonight as a church, but we didn't. 
But what about that song? What a mighty God we serve. Amen? What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. Do you believe we serve a mighty big God tonight? Amen. Psalm 34, 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. That's what we're going to try to do tonight. Amen. As a church body. Come together and exalt not ourselves, not exalt uh, this ministry, but exalt Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it's all about Jesus. Amen. Without Jesus, we are and have nothing tonight. But with Him, we have everything. What a God. Amen. What all Everything we need. You say, well, preacher, I don't have this. Then you don't need it. Because <laughs> my God says, His Word says, He'll supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So if there's something you don't have tonight, it's because God says you don't need that. Because if you needed it, you'd have it. If you needed it, you'd have it. And uh, so Psalm 69, 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song, and I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. I think about that other song. He's able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Sing that with me, will you please? He's able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that your God is able to carry you through? Hey, I don't know what you're going through tonight, but I don't have to. God does, and God's able. God is able, friend, to carry you through. Amen? He's able to carry you through. Now, the Scripture reads that Mary, that is, the Bible says, my soul, we know we're talking about Mary, Mary's soul doth magnify the Lord. Boy, God did something great in her life, didn't he? Amen? God allowed her to bring her Savior a fourth, amen, and brought it into the world, amen, uh, and so she was, uh, uh, Jesus was born, and he was already existing, amen, because uh, he's God, the Bible says in John 1, in the, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and uh, the same was in the beginning, so we know that that, that Jesus wasn't, but uh, has always lived, always been, he's, he's, he's omnipotent, he's God, and dude in flesh, but I'm saying he came to the world 2,000 years ago, amen, in the form of his own creation. And God allowed Mary uh, to be part of that. Amen. What a blessing. What a thing God did in her life. And, uh, you know, Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Now, tonight I have something somewhere. I forgot where I put it. Oh, right here. Amen. That's good. All right. I've got something tonight that I want to show you. Amen. All right. Who knows what these are? Amen. Amen. <laughs> These are what? These are binoculars. Boy, Brother Steve, I don't have any candy to give you. I'm sorry. Amen. But uh, but good answer. Amen. You did learn something in school. Praise Amen. God. No. Yes, sir. These are binoculars. All right. Now, what do you do with binoculars? What's that, Brother Frank? Amen. They magnify. You look through them and they magnify things. Amen. They magnify things for you. They make things bigger for you to be able to see it. Amen. They, so you can see uh, what you're trying to look at. Tonight, the world needs to see in and through our lives the bigness of our God. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. The world needs to see in and through our lives. Listen, we need to be binoculars for Jesus. Amen. Amen? We need to be binoculars for Jesus. The world needs to see just how big our God is. And, uh, and that He is a mighty big God. And uh, there's many ways I thought about going tonight with this message, but I want to give us simply some things tonight uh, that you and I, how we can uh, be binoculars for God. Number one, tonight, if you want to take notes, by giving thanks. Amen? By giving thanks. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I say tonight, we need to give thanks to our God. Mm -hmm. Our God is a mighty big God, and we can't thank Him enough. We can't thank Him enough. Amen? Amen. Uh, the, the Bible teaches uh, that the seraphims, the cherubims, hey, those angels in heaven, hey, they're constant. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. They're worshiping. Hey, listen. He deserves all of it all the time. Amen? Amen. All of it all the time. He's Amen. a mighty big God. Remember the uh, in the Gospel of Luke 17, uh, verse number 17, where there was ten lepers that came to Jesus. Remember that? He encountered those ten lepers, and what happened? Jesus healed all ten of them of an uncurable disease. He healed all ten of them. But how many church turned back and said thank you? Only one. Only one. Only one of the ten turned back 
And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Hey, listen tonight. There's been many that have been saved. There's been many that's had their lives touched and changed by God. But where are they tonight? Amen. Where are the nine? Hey, listen tonight. I thank God I'm here. Amen. I thank God I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I want to thank God for what He's done in my life. Amen. Amen. And we can talk about it or we can live it. Amen. I don't want to talk Amen. is cheap if life don't back it up. Right. Amen. And so we want to live it. Give thanks to your God. Hey, listen. I think about the song. Thank you, Lord. For saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me what? Thy great salvation, so rich and so free. Amen. You can't outdo God. Amen. He's no man's debtor tonight. And we ought to give thanks to our God. Number two. Number two, how can we magnify the Lord? Number one, by giving Him thanks everywhere we go. We ought to thank God for everything that He does in our life. And we ought to be, uh, praise ought to be on our tongues all the time. Amen. Yeah. I tell you what, you want to know how to get rid of that uh, negative spirit and that tongue that uh, says things all God say? Put some praise on the end of that tongue. Amen. Just start thanking God. Amen. It's, 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 well, I, that, that'll help you. That'll help you from being critical and saying things you ought not say. It's just, just praise God. Just thank God for what He's doing and what He's done in your life. Uh, and Because He's good. He's better than we deserve. Amen? Right. Are you with me tonight? He's better than we deserve. Number two, have a clear testimony. A clear, clean testimony. Take your Bibles and go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 tonight. A clear, clean testimony. Hey, this is a way we can magnify the Lord. You see, the world wants to, the world is not going to see God unless we help them see it. We've got to magnify the Lord. We've got to magnify our God. And they're watching us. And uh, we need to magnify Him tonight. And we can't do that without His help and by His grace. But with His grace and by His help, we can do that tonight. And we can do it by giving thanks. Giving thanks unto our God and testifying of what He's done in our life. And have a clean testimony. Titus chapter 2. I gave you time to turn there. Look at verse number 7 tonight. The scripture reads, In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing, notice this, uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the, notice this, the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Oh, let me say something tonight. We need to have a clean testimony. Amen. We need to have a testimony, a way of life that backs up the words that we speak. Amen? And, and, and a pattern, a pattern of those good works. Um, it's not enough that we did it once. Amen? We need to constantly, regularly be doing those things. And, and I know, and I know sometimes we, we make mistakes, but thank God. That's why 1 John 1, 9 is in the book. Amen? That's why it's still there. Amen? That we, we, we uh, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But tonight, we want to have a clean testimony. I think about a boy that, um, that uh, was being called down by his mother for breakfast. And it was early in the morning hours, and he came down for breakfast. And when he came to the breakfast table, he sat down at the table, and the mama turned around and getting ready to give him his breakfast. And she said, My, oh, my, son... How in the world did you get so filthy so early in the morning? He said, Mom, that's easy. I went to bed dirty. I went to bed dirty. You know what? Tonight I believe that's what's going on across the country with God's people. We go to bed dirty. We just keep the filth on us. And we just keep it. And it keeps piling up and piling up and piling up and piling up. Friends, we need to get it clean. Amen? We need to make it right and uh, confess that sin and forsake that sin. Confess it and forsake it. I mean, listen tonight. Remember what Jesus said to the woman that was caught in adultery? Go and sin what? No more. No more. Hey, listen, Jesus didn't say, hey, I saved you by grace. Now go ahead and live it out. It's all good. It's all, it's all grace. Amen. No, Jesus said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Now, that's not a fair sample thing to say, well, well, well I'm not. But, but that's to say, hey, look what God did in my life. Amen. God forgave me of that sin. God cleansed me of that sin. And God gave me a life worth living, a, a new direction. And I want to go and sin no more. Amen. Amen, church. Go and sin no more. A giving of thanks and a, 
and having a clean testimony, a testimony that cannot be denied by those of the contrary part. They may not like what you do or like what you say, but they ought not be able to give uh, uh, marks against it, amen, to say that, uh, well, uh, well, you say this, but I see you over here doing that, amen. Well, you say, I shouldn't say this, but you're over here saying this, amen. So let's make sure that we're not guilty of playing, uh, of playing, um, uh, uh, the hypocrite or playing the, uh, 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 the the actor tonight. Let's make sure. And listen, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. We understand. And by the way, the world will be the first to tell you about it. Amen. Those that are watching will be the first to tell you. They, 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 can't, they won't do it, but they'll be the first to tell you you didn't do it. Amen. But let me just say this tonight. You just make sure that you're doing the best you can. Amen. Just do the best. I'm not trying to be hard tonight. I'm just saying we do. Let's just say, God, here am I, Lord. I want to magnify you. I want people to see in my life how big you are, how much you reached down and changed my life, how you gave me a direction we're taking, how you uh, saved my soul. God, it's real. It's real. I know it's real because Jesus lives in me. I'm not the things the same I used to be. The things are different now. Amen. Uh, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Amen, church. Are you with me tonight? Amen. Magnifying the Lord. Hey, listen, let's be a pair of binoculars for Jesus. Let's just give him thanks tonight. Let's just praise his holy name. He's worthy tonight of praise. Let's just have a clean testimony. Amen. How much glorifying is being given to our God in heaven because of the good works that we're living right here on this earth? You know, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, let's turn over to Matthew 5, 16 tonight. Remember the words of our Lord on the Sermon on the Mount there? In Matthew 5, 16, he said, Let your light so shine before men. What? What did he say after that? That they may see your what? Your heart? No, your good works. Man can't see your heart, but man can see your works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, tonight, listen, Liberty Baptist Church, do we have a testimony that brings glory to the name of our Father? Amen. Do people want to do people want to draw close to our God because they see how big He is in our life? That's what I'm talking about tonight. Are you understanding the message I'm saying tonight? Is there people that are saying, "Boy, there's something in you that I want"? I, I want what it is, God. That's what it is. Amen. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Giving of thanks, having a clean testimony. Let me say number three tonight. Having a Christ-like thinking. Having a Christ-like thinking is a way that we can magnify our God by His grace and with His help. We can make God big to the world. That they see just who He is. That what He can do in a person's life if they'll surrender, surrender themselves to Him. Amen? It's not what I did. It's what Christ did in me. Amen? Amen? It's what Christ did in me tonight. And, and listen, having a Christ-like thinking... The scripture reads, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Well, let me ask the question tonight. Do you think goodwill toward others? Are you caring tonight? Are you compassionate tonight toward others? Are you sympathetic of those that have struggles? Do you, are, do you listen to their, to their heartaches? Uh, the Bible says in Luke 19, 41, And when he was come near, speaking of Jesus, Coming to Jerusalem, he beheld the city and he wept over it. He wept over the city. Jesus had compassion. Mm -hmm. Do we have compassion tonight? Do we have love and mercy in our hearts toward one another? Uh, listen. The church house, if there's anybody, first of all, the world doesn't know love if they don't know, because they don't know God. But God's people... No love because God is love. Mm -hmm. And we ought to have love and mercy in our hearts toward one another. Mm -hmm. And toward the, the, the center of this world. Now, I don't say justify the sin, but we ought to have love and mercy toward the center. Hey, listen, I'm glad God had love and mercy toward me. Amen? I'm glad He did. And tonight we ought to have love and mercy in our hearts. Um, the kids and I were together. And we were going to pick up some pizza. And when we got in the in the line, in the drive through line, there was a, when we pulled in and came around the building, there was a police officer that had a lady uh, stopped there at the drive, 
at the drive through there. And uh, he was giving her all kinds of tests, talking to her for a little while. And then he, she was sitting in the car and he was outside of the car. And uh, he took his finger and he was doing like this, you know, and, try, and testing her and so forth. He did that for a little bit. We couldn't get her, excuse me, we couldn't get around him. Drive through was blocked. So we just waited. We sat in the car and we watched this whole process. And uh, then he came back and he uh, went to his car and then he moved his vehicle and everything and so forth. And we were able to get by. And uh, he had the lady get out of the car. We were coming up now, getting closer to get our pizza. We were going to uh, there at Little Caesars there to get some pizza. And uh, I looked in the mirror. And he had her out, the, out get out of the car, and he had her do some walking and so forth. And she was failing the test very miserably, very miserably. And uh, I could tell before she got out of the car, just by, I was sitting in my car looking at her in her car, and I could just tell by her face, her eyes, and so forth. I could see it. And uh, I told the kids that uh, that uh, that she was going to be arrested. Uh, I knew it was going to happen. By the way, uh, that was a good thing. That was for her safety and the safety of others. And hopefully, uh, you know, by God's grace, uh, she'll get saved and, and, uh, and um, so forth. But anyway, she was filling the test. About that time, we'd gotten our pizza. And he, as we were pulling away, the officer and two other police officers came by. And they were hand, he was handcuffing her. That they were going to take her to jail. And the one, the lady, the one lady there was kind of uh, talking about it almost in a, a mocking kind of a way and making light of what was happening and just kind of making fun of the situation. But God broke my heart. We got home. I put the pizza on the table and I went upstairs to the bedroom. I shut the door. I went to a, a place of prayer. And I just began to weep and pray. And I don't know where the lady is. I've never seen her before. But I began to think to myself, God, we've not done enough. Amen, church? Mm -hmm. We've not done enough. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, there's room for more to be mm -hmm. saved and, and to be reached and to make a difference. And listen, it's but by the grace of God that that could be any of us. Right. Any of us. You know, that's somebody's daughter. That woman was somebody's daughter. She was somebody's, uh, somebody's granddaughter. She was somebody's, uh, maybe spouse, maybe somebody's mother. And there she is going to jail. That's not something to laugh at. That's something to weep for, don't you think? That's something to be burdened about. That's not something to be pious and puffed up and to be a Pharisee and say, and say look at that person, boy, these people. No, that's something to say, oh God, break my heart and help me to be a better soul winner and reach them and get them in the church and teach them the word of God and, and, and get them under the preaching of the word of God so they can have a future for you, Lord, and be a magnifying glass for you, Lord. Amen? Amen. Oh, listen tonight. Listen. Where's your heart tonight? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do you have Christ-like thinking? I guarantee you Jesus was broken for the woman. Amen? Amen. I guarantee you Jesus was weeping for her and wanting her to be saved. She may have been saved, maybe back so now, I don't know. I guess I'm saying she wasn't saved. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm assuming that. But maybe she was saved, but just back so that I've been there in that place in my back sitting life. Not arrested, but, uh, but intoxicated. I'm saying tonight, listen, friend. Do you think forgiveness or do you think revenge? Do you think forgiveness? See, God thinks forgiveness. Do you think revenge? Luke 23, 34. Remember what Jesus said, the words of our Lord on the cross? What did he say? Father, let's get them. Is that what he said? No. no, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what Jesus said. Do we think like Jesus? Do we think forgiveness or revenge? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. How about Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, 
tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath what? What did he do, church? He forgave you, forgave me, forgave us. Listen tonight. No matter what anybody's done to me, they've not, they have not even come close to doing to me what I've done to God. What my sins have done to God. He had to leave all the glory for me. And if God could forgive me of all that, shame on me if I can't forgive somebody for some things they've done to me. We serve a big God tonight, amen? Now listen tonight. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, listen, let's show them how big our God is. Our God tonight is worthy of thanks. He's amen. worthy of praise. Our God tonight, listen, He's worthy of a clean testimony. He's worthy of us not telling those things uh, dirty jokes and saying those words that we ought not say. And he's worthy of us uh, trying to live separated and clean a pattern, not just a, not a hit and miss, but a pattern, a constant pattern of things so that when we speak, our words are not falling on deaf ears, amen, because we've snuffed it out by the ways of our living, but because we've tried to back it up. doesn't mean we're perfect. We're not going to be perfect. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9. We can get clean before we go to breakfast, amen. Before we go to bed at night, we can say, God, you know those sins. And by the way, let me say this. I mean, listen, the moment you have that, maybe it's a fault or maybe it's something you said. Hey, listen, don't wait. Don't don't carry that filth to lunch. Don't carry it to supper. Don't carry it to breakfast because you slept in it. Confess it. Amen. Just confess it. Confess it. Make it right. God, you saw that. You saw that, uh, what I did. You you heard that. By the way, God hears your thoughts. God, you heard that thought, that I, that word and that way I said it. That God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Cleanse me. I want to be a magnifying glass for you, God. I want to show them just how big, God, you really are. Amen? Just how big you are in my life. And having a Christ-like thinking. Now, let me add this. Not only do we need to learn to forgive others, but we need to learn to forgive ourselves. Amen? Boy, this is a big one. A lot of God's people uh, do pretty good forgiving others, but they for, they forget to forgive themselves. They don't, they don't forgive themselves. You know, I thank God tonight for Psalm 103, verse 14. Psalm 103, verse 14 is a great verse. I'm glad when God showed me this verse. Psalm 103, 14 it says this, For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are dust. You know, I thank God tonight that He knows who I am. Amen? That He made me. And you know, God knows all about me. And yet He still loves me. He forgave me of all my sin. That's a lot of sin. I've done a lot of sinning in 48 years of living. But you can't tell Him that. I'm clothed in His righteousness tonight. I'm washed in His blood tonight. Amen. Forgiven, forgiven, cleansed. Just as if I never did. Abundantly pardoned. Case closed, paid in full. My name's written down in glory. That's a blessing tonight, church. That's a blessing tonight. Hey, listen, He knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are just tonight. We need to learn to forgive ourselves. We need to learn to forgive ourselves. We need to learn to let go, amen? We need to learn to let go. Hey, listen tonight. Don't miss what God has for you tomorrow because you're holding on to what you blew up yesterday. Are you listening to me tonight? Don't. And listen, when the devil reminds you, as a matter of fact, I think the evangelist said this the other night, and uh, of course I've heard it many, many times from many, many different preachers over the years, but listen, when the... When, uh, when the devil reminds you of your past, you just remind him of his future. Amen? Just remind him of his future. Mm -hmm. And listen, when people remind you of your past, and listen, when you remind yourself of your past, remember this. As far as the east is from the west, so have I removed thy transgressions from you. Amen? Thy sins. They're, far, they're moving. They're, they're moving. They're, they're far apart. Amen. They'll never meet again. I'm not going to go to glory and face some big flat screen TV where all my sins are going to be plastered for everybody to judge. Hey, they're covered tonight. Amen. There is no sin uh, to be uh, uh, displayed. It's under the blood tonight. Learn to forgive yourself. 
Oh, uh, you say, well, I wasn't the, I wasn't the, uh, I wasn't the teenager, the, the child. I should have been in the home. I wasn't the the parent. I should have been. I wasn't the uh, the the spouse. I should have been. Well, first of all, I don't know if any of us are that. But thank God for grace. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, we made some mistakes. Hey, but Paul said, uh, matter of fact, let's turn to Philippians chapter 3. Look at what Paul said here by inspiration of God. Philippians chapter 3 tonight. And I'm closing with this verse. Then we're going to have an invitation tonight. Have an invitation. Philippians chapter 3 tonight. Look at verse 13. Look at the word of God tonight. Now listen. What was, what was Paul? He was Saul. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? His name was changed. But on the Damascus Road, remember, he got saved. Remember that? The Lord met him and he got saved. But what was Saul or the Apostle Paul before he became the Apostle Paul? What was he doing? He was bringing habit to the church. Remember that? Yeah. Habit to the church. And listen, he had letters in hand. And not just not just the men, but the men and went families. He was going to have them in prison and killed. You understand? God's people imprisoned and killed. All right? Stephen, the, the saint of God in the first century church in Jerusalem there, one that was one that was full of the Holy Ghost. Remember Stephen? The first one martyred of the New Testament church? Where did that? Where did the coats lie? At the feet of who? Jesus. At the feet of Saul. The feet of Saul. That's right. At the feet of Saul. Looking upon Stephen. And by the way, let me just say this tonight. I believe that Saul's heart was touched when Saul, when Stephen, excuse me, to his knees said, "Lord, lay this not to them, their account." Amen. To their charge. I believe that at that very moment, Stephen was a pair of binoculars. He showed just how big and mighty and strong his God is. So much to the point to where I believe Saul's heart was softened and then later, now of course Stephen died, but then later, Saw on the Damascus Road, Jesus would meet him. Amen. Whoa, that's grace. Grace. The grace of God. And met uh, Saul on that Damascus Road and said, Saul, it's hard to kick against the truth, against the prince. It's hard to kick against what you know to be real and right. And Stephen showed him how big. Now, what if Stephen would have started cussing right then? And picked up a stone and thrown it back and said, You bunch of losers. What if he would have done that? I don't think. I think, you know what I think? I think that if he'd have done that, what happens when you turn the binoculars over and you look out the other end? Everything gets smaller. I believe that if Stephen would have done that, if he'd have done what's in our flesh to do, he'd have, so to speak, symbolically, he'd have turned the binoculars over and Saul would have seen a little God he served. But boy, they cost... Stephen kept it right. Stephen kept it right. Saul looked at Stephen and I believe with all my heart. He may not have confessed it then, but he said, boy, there's something about this, this God. Something about this God that this man serves. Oh, tonight, Liberty Baptist Church. Paul says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before now, I don't believe that Paul is saying I forget in that I don't remember them anymore because I remember the sins I've committed. And you remember the sins you've committed. But I believe what Paul is saying, the key word here is not forgetting so much as it is uh, reaching forth. You see, it's too hard. You don't have time to, to, to not forgive 
when you're too busy going out. Amen? Reaching forth. Keep your feet moving. Keep moving. Keep pressing on. Reaching forth. Reaching forth to those things which are before. Now tonight, Liberty Baptist Church, let's, let's show how big our God is. Amen? Let's just be a set of binoculars for Jesus. Amen. Let's bow for prayer and have invitation tonight. Father God, I love you. I thank you for the precious word of God. I thank you for this message. Lord, I pray, starting with me, God, help me. Lord, I've not done a good job at times. Lord, I, at times I, I show way too much of myself. Lord, I pray you'll forgive me. I pray tonight that you'll help me to be what I ought to be, say what I ought to say, and do what I ought to do so that the world can see it's a mighty big God I serve. The, the true God. Not some idol, but the mighty, powerful, great I am. May they see just how big you are, God, by looking into our lives. Those of us that claim you, as our personal Savior. Lord, help us to reach this city. God, I pray, I prayed a couple times already for that lady. But I pray again tonight. Not just her, she's just one of the many in our city. Lost. Lost, God. On their way to hell. Bound by the addictions of the world. Bound by the things that many of us in this church tonight have been bound to at some point. But then Jesus reached out. Grace stepped in. Lord, help us tonight. Help us tonight to be binoculars for you. I pray in Jesus' name. Bless this invitation. Would you stand please with your heads bowed as the organist plays.